Thank you for taking the time to learn about Rapid TO Bus and Street Club priority. During Phase 1, we asked what your priorities are for improving bus and streetcar service. We heard from 5,200 survey respondents and the feedback helped us evaluate and identify which key roadways would benefit most from transit priority solutions over the next 10 years. In the next 15 minutes, we will review what Rapid TO is about, what we heard in Phase 1 consultation, and discuss how you can provide feedback and contribute to Rapid TO Bus and Streetcar Priority Phase 2. So let's get started. Through Rapid TO, the TTC and City of Toronto are developing a plan to deliver safe, efficient, and equitable bus and streetcar service improvements through transit priority solutions. Transit priority improvements will make bus and streetcar service more reliable, reduce delays and shorten travel times on congested roadways. The goal of Rapid TO is to make public transit a more practical option so that more people would choose to use them. Buses and streetcars are important to the city's public transit system and do the heavy lifting to move people to access employment, services, education, recreational facilities, and more. In fact, a 2016 survey found that 70% of daily TTC trips in Toronto rely on a bus or streetcar. Today, more than 140 TTC routes share the road with cars. Given the high demand in bus and streetcar travel, it is essential to make bus and streetcar service reliable. This makes traveling on a bus or streetcar more attractive, but it also enables more people to move more efficiently. Transit priority solutions are also generally faster and cheaper to build than rapid transit, so more people can benefit sooner. Rapid TO is supported by the City's official plan and TTC's 5-year service plan and 10-year outlook, which provides guidance on the long-term vision for public transit in Toronto. The 2020 City Council-approved COVID-19 Impacts and Opportunities Report emphasized the importance of bus and streetcar roadways for equity-deserving neighbourhoods. By improving public transit, the City's most equity-deserving communities can better access job opportunities, health care, and community services. Now that we've looked at an overview of Rapid TO, let's review the consultation process and how we've been gathering your feedback to identify the top 20 priority roadways, as well as the process for the future Rapid TO studies for each individual roadway. Consultation on Rapid TO is taking place in three phases. In the fall of 2021, during Phase 1, we wanted to understand your priorities. We are currently in Phase 2 and will be identifying the top roadways. And in Phase 3, we will be looking at roadway-specific studies for the top roadways identified, which will take place between 2022 to 2032. There are a variety of factors that go into decision making for Rapid TO through each project phase, and public consultation is built into each study phase. Public feedback gathered during Phase 2, together with technical considerations, will inform staff recommendations to the Executive Committee followed by City Council later this spring. If City Council approves of the staff recommendation, the project team can move forward with Phase 3. We'd like to share a little bit more on how the evaluation has taken place at each phase. Phase 1 consultation focused on receiving feedback on what factors should be taken into account when prioritizing roadways to study and apply transit priority solutions. After reviewing your input, an evaluation framework was developed and used to assess and identify the top 20 roadways recommended for funding and future Rapid TO studies. We are now in Phase 2 and reporting back on the Phase 1 evaluation results and looking for your feedback on the list of roadways prioritized for study, consultation, and installation over the next 10 years. Phase 3, proposed for the 10-year period between 2022 to 2032, will be the start of roadway studies and determining which transit priority solutions work best for each community. Transit priority solutions can vary. 
These may include the implementation of dedicated bus lanes, high occupancy vehicle lanes, queue jump lanes, transit priority signals, and more. There is no one size fits all solution to provide transit priority on a roadway. The project team will study each roadway and look at a toolbox of solutions before recommending different options for the local community to provide feedback on. Now, let's go over to what we've heard through the Phase 1 online study. The survey was open for eight weeks from October 4th to November 28th, 2021. In order to remove barriers and encourage participation, the survey was translated into the 10 top home languages spoken in Toronto, as well as French. There were 5,200 survey respondents, with 137 respondents completing the survey in a non-English language. About 50% of respondents provided demographic information and 45% provided their home postal code information. 13% of those respondents self-identified as living in an equity-deserving neighborhood or one of the city's 31 Neighborhood Improvement Areas, or NIAs for short. Since questions were optional, not all 5,200 respondents answered every single question. However, there was a 97% response rate on the criteria rating activity. While we had broad participation from all Toronto districts, we received the most responses from Toronto and East York. The gender and age groups of respondents had similar representation to citywide trends. On the left, you can see the responses for the main mode of travel on a typical weekday, which was answered by 2,700 respondents. 69% reported public transit as their most frequently used mode of transportation while 15% said walking and cycling, and 13% reporting using a car, either as a driver or passenger. On the right, you can see the responses for household income, which was again answered by 2,700 respondents. The survey had relatively proportional representation of income groups. Additionally, 13% of respondents identified as a person with a disability and 28% of respondents were born outside of Canada. The data collected suggests that an adequate range of age, gender, travel modes, and income groups are represented in the survey. Additionally, we received input on the criteria used to evaluate all bus and streetcar roadways across Toronto, including the addition of the one new criteria, that being major destinations. We'd like to provide a bit more background on how we evaluated priorities in Phase 1. If you took the survey, the image on the right may look familiar. Respondents were asked to rate existing evaluation criteria on a scale of 1 to 5 based on level of importance to them. Individual scores for each criteria were collected and a weight was assigned based on the final rating results. Many people rated each of the evaluation criteria as five stars, suggesting general support for existing evaluation criteria. From 2,000 suggestions for additional criteria, prioritizing roadways that serve as major destinations such as schools, community services, and other amenities was added to the evaluation framework. Based on 5,054 responses, we calculated the average star rating, which ranged from 3.85 to 4.48 stars, with an overall weighted average rating of 4.2 out of 5. The top rated criteria include ridership, travel experience, and equity. We can compare how respondents rated each criteria based on their main mode of travel on a typical weekday before the COVID-19 pandemic. Public transit and auto users ranked the relative importance of each criteria very similarly. Auto users tended to rate criteria lower in importance than other road users, but the relative ranking remained similar. People walking, cycling, and using public transit rated priorities very similarly. 
Respondents ranked the relative importance of each criteria very similarly, suggesting similar priorities across all road users. In phase one, we also asked respondents to identify where they experienced transportation challenges. The top challenges identified were traffic congestion and slow bus or streetcar service. Most challenges identified were in downtown Toronto, as well as on Yonge Street and Eglinton Avenue, which you can see in yellow on the right. Slow service was identified most frequently on Queen Street, Dundas Street, and College Street. For crowding on bus and streetcar, Spadina Avenue and Dufferin Street stand out. Crowding also affects streetcar crossings at Yonge Street. After phase one, the project team reviewed all survey feedback and began analyzing the data. Let's go over the results of the evaluation. The goal of the evaluation process was to identify the priority roadways that best align with the evaluation criteria. Each roadway received a score based on how well it fared against each of the criteria. For example, for the criteria population growth, roadways along neighborhoods with high population growth will get a score of four, and those with the lowest growth will get a score of one. Finally, a weight was applied to each score based on the priority rating provided by the public. Since the study began, both the number of criteria and the weighting of each criteria have changed. Before public consultation, there were five criteria that made up the evaluation framework. Following further technical analysis and the completion of the first consultation phase, there are now eight different criteria. Each criteria is weighed according to the rating provided by the public. Ridership is now 13.3% of the total score, followed by travel experience at 13%. Equity is 12.9%. Connections is 12.3% with safety coming in at 11.8%, followed by ease of implantation at 11.6%, and new criteria, major destinations, at 12.6%. The bus and streetcar priority network analysis score map, shown on the right, summarizes this evaluation with the overall priority score. Red roadways scored the highest, followed by orange, yellow, and blue the lowest. Roadways that received higher scores will be prioritized for study and implementation of transit priority solutions within the next 10 years. Roadways that received lower scores will be studied after 2032 and beyond. From the evaluation, we were able to identify the top 20 roadways that received the highest scores as shown on the map on the right. These roadways are proposed to move forward in the next 10 years for further study, design, and implementation of transit priority solutions. 17 out of 20 roadways pass through equity-deserving neighborhoods and will benefit the city's most vulnerable residents. The top 20 roadways include Bathurst Street North, College Street, Carlton Street, Gerard Street, Don Mills Road, Dufferin Street South, Dundas Street, Eglinton Avenue East, Finch Avenue East, Jane Street, Keel Street, King Street, Lawrence Avenue East and West, McCowan Road, Queen Street, Shepherd Avenue East and West, Steeles Avenue West, Victoria Park Avenue, Western Road, and Wilson Avenue. Please visit toronto.ca forward slash Rapitio for a copy of this list. Of the 7,900 data points collected from the public on transportation related challenges and opportunities, 43% were within 50 meters of the top 20 roadways. There will be more opportunities to identify additional challenges and opportunities in phase three through the development of the 20 roadway specific studies. Now that the top 20 roadways have been identified, what does this mean for the next 10 years? 
Following your feedback during phase two, a staff report with final recommendations will be presented to executive committee and city council for consideration. The report will include a final list of top 20 roadways recommended for funding so that the city and TTC can begin studying, designing, and installing transit priority solutions on the roadways over the next 10 years. So you might be asking, when will rapid TO studies begin? Well, some rapid TO studies have already started. Rapid TO Eglinton Avenue East, Kingston Road, Morningside Avenue route was accelerated as a response to COVID-19 and was completed in 2020 and is currently being monitored. Also, Rapid TO Jane Street is currently underway. The development of the rest of the Rapid TO studies will be informed by the timing of planned capital projects such as road reconstruction or rehabilitation initiatives. If any of the top 20 roadways don't align with local priorities or other planned capital projects, then projects planned for the longer term will be considered earlier. For any roadways where Metrolinx is leading a rapid transit project, interim transit priority solutions will be considered. So, how can you provide your feedback for phase two and stay informed? If you'd like to register for virtual meetings, or if you have a question, or would like to complete the online feedback form, please visit the project webpage at toronto.ca forward slash rapid TO. The feedback form will be open until April 20th, 2022. You can also contact us by telephone at 416-338-7797 or by emailing us at rapidto at toronto.ca. Thank you for your feedback on how to keep Toronto moving.